Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about how to select datum features. It's arguably one of the most difficult things to do in your tolerancing scheme is select a primary and a secondary and tertiary based on function. And I'm going to show you a series of examples for how we can do this on different example parts. All these examples that we'll go through today are actually from our Geotel Fundamentals program. You can watch the online videos and purchase the program or our Geotel workbook on our website in the link below. So we want to apply geometric tolerancing in three steps. And the first step, the most important, is what we'll talk about here, selecting datum features. So we want to establish the leaders, the datum reference frame for what we want all our position and profile tolerance is applied to. So we're going to pick a primary, a secondary, and a tertiary datum feature using these symbols here. Things to think about when you're selecting datum features is you want to constrain those six degrees of freedom. Every part has those six degrees of freedom, three translations, three rotations. We want to constrain those when we select those datum features. Then we want to look at the functional alignment. How does that part fit? How does it mount in the assembly? And think about those constraints when you're doing those primary, secondary, tertiary. After we select those datum features, we'll qualify those datum features using flatness, perpendicularity, relate B to A, relate C to A and B. And then we'll apply our third and final step, which is locate all the other features. So remember our two big location tolerances, position for features of size, and profile for surfaces. So let's look at our first example here. We're going to look at our hanger bracket. Now first, let's look at the assembly. How does it fit in the assembly? So look at the picture in that lower right there. And the part is going to be mounted up against the back wall bolted in place. Before it gets bolted in, though, it hangs on this underside surface. This hole is for a bushing, and a shaft is going to be mating inside. And the important thing is this part is pushed up against this side edge to properly locate the shaft left and right. All right, so then what sets up the initial attitude of the part? How does it get mounted in the assembly? And it feels like those three big bolts there are always going to be pulling it up against that face. So that's why I selected that as our primary datum feature. It really sets the attitude, biggest surface on the part, and also the three bolts, I think, really always pull it up against that face. So we're going to pick that as A, put a nice flatness tolerance on it. Now B, well, it seems to hang on that underside surface. So if it's hanging on the underside, that's a really good B right there. Nice perpendicular surface, also a functional one that locates it to the assembly. So now think in terms of degrees of freedom. What movement is still left on the part? Well, if it mounts up against this A, it aligns rotationally using this bottom edge, the part can still slide back and forth. So what keeps it from moving? Well, a hole could do it. But if you notice in the note down here, it says mounts against the side edge to properly locate the shaft. That's setting a leader and a follower. The leader is that side edge. The follower is that hole. So that clue right there is going to tell us we want this as our tertiary datum feature, C. So our datum reference frame for our part is going to be aligned on this bottom edge, B, and up against this side edge, C. And that's where we want all of our basic dimensions and tolerances to be related to. So look how 750, 2 inches, 3.25, 4 inches, all coming off of that datum reference frame coordinate system. So then we'll apply our two big symbols, position and profile, to locate all of our features to that datum reference frame. We position our holes to A, B, and C, position these holes to ABC, position these holes to ABC, and then profile all of our surfaces to ABC. Since our surfaces weren't that important, we can just let that be covered by our general block tolerance there, profile 20. But important holes will have a tighter tolerance, less important holes maybe a little bit looser tolerance. But the important thing is that datum reference frame. How does it mount? How does it fit in the assembly? Select those based on the function. Now sometimes I get people, they say, well, I want that hole to be the datum feature there. Shouldn't that be the, the primary? I don't know about primary, you know, maybe the tertiary, but in this case, properly mounts against the side edge, that really tells you the edge is the leader in this case. Maybe if that functional requirement wasn't there, I would have the hole as my tertiary datum feature and have everything spidering off that hole. So what is the function? How does it work? You know, is the hole that it locates it or is it the edge that locates it? You want to pick that accordingly. Let's look at another example for selecting our datum features. This is inspired by our little gearbox assembly where we have two pieces mounting together. There is a hole in the lid, and there's a slot on the other side. Then on our mating case, you have an alignment pin here, an alignment pin here. There's a main shaft that mounts in a bushing that rotates through here with a gear, and hopefully that gear is going to mesh up with this other gear mounting on a shaft through this hole. It's really important that the two holes in the center get lined up with the other two holes in the mating part. So to get that to happen, they use the uh, alignment hole and slot that goes into the two pins. So we want to pick those datum features based on those alignment features. So we selected the primary as A. We need a big plane to kind of set the attitude of the part. What do you want to look normal to when the parts come together? 
Well, I think it's that big face right there. So I put a nice flatness on that. Now the hole is more important than the slot. The hole is our locator in the X and Y. So we're going to select that as our B. That's going to establish a datum axis right in the center of that hole. Now think about degrees of freedom. If you mount that part on a face and a hole, how can that part still move? Well, it can rotate around that pivot point. So to stop that from rotating, they pick this C. Remember, you line up this datum feature symbol with the dimension here to establish a center plane. The center plane of that slot is what we're going to align with that hole. That's going to give us the clocking, the rotational alignment around that pivot point. So then look where our 0, 0 for all our dimensions are. This is great for ordinate dimensioning here. You put your 0, 0 lines right where your datum reference frame coincides. And then all dimensions are based off of that. Then any important tolerances, we're going to put a position, tooth out, pretty important because it's a tight tolerance. And things that are not important, we'll give it a looser tolerance, 20 thou. So now you know how the part fits. How does it align? That's your ABC. Tight tolerances, position of 2, that's important. Loose tolerances, position within 20, not so important. So function is driving what you want these datum features to be. I'm not really thinking about manufacturing at this point. I'm thinking about how does the part fit? How does it mount? What relationships are needed for it to work properly? So if that's the way you tolerance the lid, then we want the case to be done the exact same way. So that same alignment pin that go, went into the hole, that's selected as our B. That pin that went into the slot, that's selected as C. Now we're going to want to drive everything on this part relative to that A, B, C datum reference frame. And the idea behind this is you relate everything on this part relative to the alignment pins. Then when you go to the other part, you relate everything on this piece to the alignment holes. So when that pin and alignment hole set comes together, you have a relationship of everything on this part relative to the other thing on this part. So datum features are so important. They're the ambassadors of how they talk to the mating part. And you want to pick those of the alignment pins, the dowels, the locators, the pilots. How does it fit? How does it mount? Those are our leaders for the piece, our datum features. Let's look at another application here. This is an automotive example, a little seat latch bracket. This is found on the underside of your driver's seat of your car or something. You know, where you pull up the lever, you can adjust the seat forward, drop the lever, and it re-racks itself in a new place. So here's the picture of the assembly. And this is so important, right? How does it fit? How does it mount in the assembly is everything. So you always have to know the assembly location before you can pick these datum features. So it fits into the main frame right here into a little slot. There's a main pivot pin in pink that goes through these two coaxial holes. This adjustment lever right here will attach to a handle that the user can pull up. And so then it'll pivot on this alignment pin right here, unrack itself from the seat rack. You can adjust the whole thing forward, let go of the handle, and it should re-rack itself in a new location. Usually I'm looking for a big plane for the part, but this one really wasn't a plane. This one kind of pivoted on a main axis here. So we could actually use a primary axis as A for this piece. So we would look, how does it pivot? Well, it's really on these two coaxial holes right here. So we can select these as our primary A. So by selecting 2x, both holes, that establishes an axis running through both of them. So this part will actually have two A holes. Got to be careful calling a hole A, though. Just call it the datum hole, we'll say that. All right, so now once it's on that main axis there, what keeps it from translating along that axis? Well, it kind of hits against this side edge right here and also fits against this side edge. Now, which one does it hard mount against? Well, it kind of bounces between both of them. So you don't have to select one or the other. You could actually go with a center plane datum if you want to get fancy here. And that's what I decided. We're going to go with B as our center plane. All right, so A establishes the main four degrees of freedom for the part, two translations. You get your X and your Y. And rotations keeps it from pivoting and pivoting. Now, what keeps it from translating along the axis? Well, we said that tight fitting width going into that slot. That would be a good one for a center plane B. Now, the part can still rotate. So we need a C. Now I think there's two choices for a C here. You could either pick this face that racks itself into the seat rack, or you could select the hole. So it's kind of leader versus follower. How do you want to look at this? Do you want to align to the hole and see where the face has to be? Or do you want to align to the face and see where the hole has to be? And either way would work, right? That's kind of the fun part about datum features sometimes. There's not always one answer where you have to do it this way. Do you want to approach this from the perspective of selecting the hole as your leader? Zeroing in on that, controlling where the face has to be, or zeroing in on the face and controlling where the hole has to be. And either one would work here. Now, because it was my part, I get to pick, and I selected the hole as C. So in this case, we're going to pivot about that primary axis. We're going to align rotationally 
with this hole here, C, and that sets up our datum reference frame. In this view, we have our axis as A, and that center plane as B, that's our datum reference frame. So we qualified those datum features. A will make them coaxial to each other with a position tolerance, zero at MMC. We want B, the center plane, to be perpendicular to that axis. And then this hole we want to be positioned, located relative to that main pivot point A. Now every other feature will be positioned and profiled to that. Now since all the rest of the features are all surfaces, we're going to use profile tolerance. This is an important profile tolerance on this face, located to the coordinate system. This is a really important one here, profile within point 0.6. That's going to determine whether it'll unrack itself or get caught up when you pull that lever right there. So the location of this surface relative to where it mounts, really critical point 0.6 profile. These are also pretty important here. So we have a profile point 0.4 all around on these square shapes so they fit the seat rack properly. And then the rest of the surfaces, meh, doesn't really matter how these are cut out, so we'll just give it a giant profile 1.2. Hopefully this example helps that it doesn't always have to be a primary plane for your part. Sometimes a primary axis can be just as strong, maybe even stronger, for a primary datum, how your part fits and functions in the assembly. In fact, let's talk about one more that I think would have a primary axis on a part. Let's take a connecting rod. I think most engineers know how a connecting rod would mount. You know, you have your main crankshaft that would mount down here, and then you have your piston that would be up here, maybe through a wrist pin or something. So we have two features here that really need a tight relationship between them to control where is one relative to the other. So you want to pick what's your leader in this case. Well, do you want to mount on the piston and tell where the crankshaft has to be? Or do you want to say the crankshaft is your datum and control where the piston has to be? Now it seems like the main crankshaft is kind of everything here, so I think this hole would be an excellent primary datum feature. That'll create a nice A axis that we can align most of the things on the part to. Now we still have to stop translation along that and rotation about that. So stopping rotation about that I think is pretty easy. This hole for the wrist pin and the piston would be an excellent selection for datum feature B. That's what stops rotation of the part in the assembly. So now the part can still translate in and out. So maybe select a face here, a face here, or if you want to get fancy we could even do a center plane datum on it to keep symmetry on the part, drive everything towards the middle. So we're thinking about how does it fit, how does it function, what's your leader, what's your follower. That's what we want to look for our datum features for. Well, hopefully these examples helped. I think concrete examples are always the best way to teach geometric taunting. You know, we say select datum features for function, and that's such a broad term, function. What does that mean? Well, here's how these parts function. Select the datum features accordingly. Well, if you like these videos here, I encourage you to go to our website and check our Geotel Fundamentals program and our Geotel Pro Book. It can be found on the links below. Thanks, everyone, for the likes and subscribes.